Broadcasting live from the moon and back, this is The Coin Chat, the most trusted voice for all things cryptocurrency. Each week, we dissect an important issue and cut through the noise and misinformation out there in the world of blockchain, cryptocurrency, and ICOs, capturing the facts that truly matter to you that will give you an edge in this fast-moving emerging market. The who, what, where, when, and how of what you need to know in crypto to get ahead so you don't get left behind. Now, here are your co-hosts, financial and crypto experts, Yuri Cataldo, Steve Good. Hey, this is Steve Good. And Yuri Cataldo. Cutting through the noise and misinformation in cryptocurrency to tell you what truly matters. And today, everyone, we've got a very special guest. Edward, otherwise famously known as Crypto Beast on YouTube, is here joining us today. Edward, welcome to the show. Thank you me over, Thank you very much. Edward. Beast, welcome to the show. So right. the reason, everyone, why Crypto Beast has joined us today is because he's been doing something rather cool, exciting, and interesting that I think is worth sharing, which is... You've been creating effectively your own, the ultimate experiment, creating a coin from scratch and just yep. running an experiment and cataloging the journey, the experiment on your channel. So, That's okay. right. So that, that yeah. is correct. Yeah. So look, look, it's, um, it, it all started as an experiment. I'll make it as quick as possible as we agreed, but yeah. it started, <laughs> an <experiment. laughs> started as an experiment. I created my own coin. And I said, you know what, let's see if I can make it worth something. Uh, and the reason was is because there's so many projects out there which are just rubbish, basically. And the coin is worth something, and people think it just because it has a value, the actual project behind it is worth something. It isn't. So I said, look, I'm going to create this coin, and I'm going to try to make it into something uh, by just getting the community together. Just right. people all over the world in the crypto community. So is there some sort of utility value of the coin? Is it used for something? Yeah, so what, what it turned into is basically we, we all got together and said, why don't we actually do something which, the, which people can benefit from? Let's actually help investors in the, in the in industry. Okay. So we created a platform, which is going to be launched soon, and it's, it's going to be a sort of a no-shill platform. So I'm sure you, all of you have heard there's a lot of shilling going on in the industry, and that's what we're creating. And the actual token is being used for the membership fees, basically, for this platform. Okay, very cool. So uh, there's going to be two sections. Sorry to yeah, interrupt. There's going to be yeah. two sections. There's one, yeah. one review section, and the second section is going to be an artificial intelligence, which my artificial intelligence engineer is creating from scratch, and it's going to be able to predict Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other coins. And so that's you've going actually to be built cool. something. It's not just, I'm throwing a coin on the market, and everyone, please buy it. You've actually done something. But that's right. Experimentally, in order to take people through the journey from beginning to end of how hard it is and what you have to do and what, so what's what? Let me just ask, what's gone really well for you over the last few months in this journey? Well, I think it's the support of my community, really. People sort of join and they saw I run no ICO, and I'm just getting people together, and that's what people really appreciate. They they like it. I'm not asking for money and sort of giving something. I'm actually putting in a lot of work into this project, and that's what's gone really well. Mm -hmm. And Yuri's going to ask me another question. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> right. Well, no. So I was. Uh, so usually people go the reverse, where they, you know, create an idea and then and then go in the in the token opposite. I mean, the the other way around. I'm curious on when was it when you were in this project that you decided then that the token you were creating would be this platform. So where did that come in? Yeah. So. Th th I, f I think it's what the community said to me because I was going to sort of potentially run an ICO, sell this token. Yeah. Uh, but then I said, I can't, it needs a utility because otherwise it's going to fail. Like right. as soon as we hear an exchange, if it's not being utilized and bought, the price will drop and that's it, it's gone. So yeah. we said, instead of, you know, this experiment being something that, oh, maybe I, could, I personally can make some money and everyone involved can make. Why don't we actually help people? And that's where we all saw, there, there was only a few hundred of us in the beginning. And yeah. you know, these, these couple of people, they just said, look, let's create something where we actually help people, like I said before. So that's yeah. where it all started, basically. Sure. Where did your community come into play? Like, where did you meet your community? And where so, did you Awesome. I had uh, my, I have my own YouTube channel, so that I used to do like uh, interviews with ICO projects. So that's okay. why I had a really small community in the beginning, so maybe a few hundred people. 
and I, had the, uh, I it all started, I had a Facebook group. So I had like a community and I, I just did articles. I had my own blog, which, which is where uh, the platform will be now. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so that's where it all sort of began. It was a few hundred people and then it sort of blew up. I did an airdrop recently and that's when a lot of people sort of joined from the industry. So Yuri, take note. The first thing he started doing, which we, we beg all of these people to do, he started by building out awareness and yeah. building community before he went off and started creating the project. And I, I've got to say right. to you, Crypto Beast, that's the thing that most people don't do. They're in yeah. a rush to say, give me money, give me money. And you've gone the other way around and you're actually saying, hey, I'm building a community and building a community and building a community. Like me, follow me, please subscribe. And then yeah. by the yeah. way, now I'm launching a project and I'd love if you could get involved and get engaged in this project because it's part of the ecosystem of what we built. And that's right. this classic right. example of what people should be doing and it's great to hear that somebody who doesn't actually have a reason to build a crypto project does it as an experiment, does it more yeah. correctly than most people. <laughs> right? You know, you've told me this right. a couple of times and you're so <laughs> right on this. And I completely <laughs> agree, mate. I completely agree. That's, um, yeah, that's the, that's the issue I think a lot of projects have at the moment. Um, and there's a lot of, like I said, there's so many rubbish funds and people, yeah. especially last year, you know how many people have lost money. All of us know. 2017, oh, yeah. how many projects failed? I can't even remember. 80%? Well, like that, yeah. like, so, so, OK Exchange announced today that they're delisting 50 projects. Which exchange? OK Exchange. Oh, oh really? <laughs> well, there we go. I yeah. think, uh, yeah. That says a lot. So 50 are being delisted, are right. So how many tokens are you, so you, you're issuing how many tokens overall for the whole platform? Like, what's the total number of that, you're being, that are being, being minted? So there's seven million seven 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 base. I don't know where that number came from, but that's that's what it was. I, I just chose a number when I created it. So, so yeah. seven million sure. seven hundred seventy-seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven. Yeah, I but, didn't want to. There's no satoshis much. in there. You didn't create like a dot seven seven seven. No, no, no. Just just bang on the point. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't want too much. I don't know if that was the right idea, but. I, I, I wouldn't expect, I didn't low, expect. Low supply could lead to a higher, you know, price right. increase because, you know, the other, I mean, a lot of projects go around giving out 7 billion tokens and they're saying, right. why the token doesn't go up? Well, because the supply is ridiculously high. It's too now high. They're, they're keeping all the events selling it. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's right. a bit of- So, okay, so you've, you've, you've issued out 7, you know, 7 million plus tokens. So, and let, let me just say, so, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so what I've done, I've done an airdrop for 1 million and uh, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm just sort of considering what to do. I'm, I'm potentially doing another airdrop with an exchange, uh, but me and you had a discussion before, uh, I've delayed the, ex- the exchange listing yep. uh, as, as me and you sort of agreed that it might be for the best. Yeah, so uh, one of the so things I'm that we talked thinking. about offline was that the idea that um, if you just give out all the tokens for free and then put it on an exchange, everyone's going to sell and no one will buy. Now, this is the thing. one of the things you could do, that, now let's just, Yuri, let's help him figure out how to make his project even better as part of the yes. ultimate experience. Please, I'm all in. <laughs> so, I'm one of the in. things you could do is, you know, I mean, normally if people are selling tokens, the buyers should be the ones who really have the rights to buy and sell. The early investors want to get in because mm. what we often see is with bounty and referral, everyone wants to just dump them on day one. But yes, right. I mean, naturally the problem you've got is if the only way you're giving them out is through bounty uh, or referral or airdrop, then yeah. you need another mechanism to give them to people that might create a reason for them to buy more. Yeah. So, yeah okay. For example, mm-hmm. if you tell all the airdroppers, and they're not going to like me for saying this, by the way, but if you tell them they're all going to be locked for a year and they have to, they have to participate in other um, activities or tasks that you give them over the next year to earn more tokens, it's almost yeah. like running a master node only, but activity based where they have to hold tokens and do something to earn more. And by doing mm-hmm. that, Giving people tasks and giving them actions yeah. to complete things creates unintended loyalty because now they're doing things. They're creating, they're doing mm-hmm. work. That's why you feel so loyal at your job because you're doing stuff. Yeah. And the more you do to win a deal or to present at a conference or to organize an event, those things just create a bond between you and your company that then you want a promotion and you want to move forward. So you can yeah. do exactly the same thing with your crypto community by giving mm-hmm. them things to work on and do. But of course, the airdroppers just want to get the free money out. But yeah. you're saying to them, actually, guys, I'm sorry. It's not free money. What I didn't tell you was you have to work for it. And if you want to earn those tokens in a year from now, you're going to have to do some additional things. And if you do nothing, you'll get your tokens just in a year. And that's all you're going to get. 
I, I think they, they they would be pretty pissed if I said that. But you know what? I have to, <laughs> but I this have, is about trying to raise the value of the token, or at least keeping it stable rather than dumping it on day one. Yeah, right. yeah, I agree. But the, the 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 way I'm seeing it at the moment is that I'm going to launch the platform and I'm going to incentivize the people to use it, use their airdrop tokens for the platform because it's not an exchange. I'm going to create an amazing platform, yeah. and those airdrop people are mm -hmm. going to be the first to use. So cool. that's the way I'm seeing it. And then the exchange will come after. So the other 6.7 million tokens, what are you doing with those? So this is what I'm saying at the moment. Obviously, I don't, I want to give them out. Um, I want there to be sort of a bounty program, an airdrop program. That's what I'm considering at the moment. Well, we, we uh, gladly accept tokens as, you know, tips for, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'll, send, I'll send you a couple of thousand. Of course. Of course, it'll be my pleasure. If we ever, if yeah. we ever issue our turkey coin, you're welcome to some turkey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is brilliant. It's been an ongoing yeah, so, joke to launch a turkey coin, by the way, but we never we never actually took the experiment to the next level, although we talked about it. So we, yeah, we of course. I don't know, Yuri, I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm feeling a little bit like aspirational to follow Crypto Beast lead and just launch the turkey coin to track turkey. Just do it. See where it goes. Just do we it. Should just what, do what was the idea behind it? There wasn't. <laughs> oh, no, it was just amazing. I love it. Yeah. It had a couple of different iterations, but yeah, it was just speculation right now. It was, I think it rolls back to when we saw all the scams going on and we thought we should just launch an experimental scam project. And then we were critiquing the SEC's version of a scam website, which was so badly done. It was so obviously right. a scam. You couldn't have done it worse. I mean, they could have made it look more like a crypto scam site rather than a normal one. But they yeah. got it all wrong. Mate, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to take off topic a little bit very quickly. Yeah. I literally, uh, last year, I saw a website and this dude opened and he wrote in, in the ICO, I'm doing this ICO so I can buy electronics for my house. That's what he wrote in the white paper. And people invested into it. I, I kid you not. He got like, I, I think it was like $50,000 of investments. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like, that's amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, exactly. So people got scammed last year and my plan is to put a stop to that. People are getting wiser and I think it's the right time for such a platform, you know. To so help. are you selling any of your tokens at all or are they all being given out through different means, mechanisms, what have you? So they, they are, you can buy some uh, on, on my blog, on my website at the moment. You get double of what you pay basically. Uh, but I'm not sort of incentivizing it. I'm not pushing it. Uh, I'm trying to sort of build the community and the platform first. And then when they go on the exchange, that's when I, I sort of see myself selling them and creating like an ecosystem of people buying, paying for the memberships and that being sold back to the people. Very and cool. And that way if there's cool. more people, yeah. you know, buying it, the price hopefully will rise. Yeah. So, yeah. so what would you say some of the biggest challenges have been in, in doing this experiment? I mean, what's gone just completely differently than what you would have expected? I mean, you probably went in thinking, I'm going to do this and this will happen and this will happen. Just give us a couple of quick examples of things that have just gone really not like you planned or you got completely different reactions than you were expecting from your community. I think the hardest thing uh, is marketing because with no funds, this is where I sort of agree why ICO projects and I always agree when it's like 40% of the ICO money needs to go to marketing. It does because mm -hmm. that's what will actually drive the project forward. Nobody knows about it. Uh, especially when it's in the cryptocurrency industry. So me trying to get the people involved, you know, from, from I only had 200, as I said, and there's this airdrop which sort of created that community and made the 2,000 uh, people in the group. So marketing is definitely number one. Uh, user engagement is very difficult also, I think. Uh, sort of getting people engaged and, you know, sort of understanding your project. And keeping up because I'm doing this all, all myself, and there's 2,000 people in the group, so yeah. <laughs> you can you can almost imagine how difficult that is. But so you know what, community management in Telegram all by yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, obviously I've, I've got a small team, but I've got the technical team and the web team, and right. I'm you know the face and the marketing. So right. marketing is definitely the hardest. I think we can all agree that's what all the ICO projects from last year are struggling with. Because nobody's using their, their things, their services or platforms. Well, Nobody. I think that, yeah, there's probably two things. One is they, they've done a poor job of marketing their platforms, but two, they may not have built what we were expecting or built anything. Or right. they didn't market it, or they just kept the money. Uh, that's yeah. what I feel like. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of question marks around a lot of the projects. Yeah. I mean, there's projects I'm still following, and I'm kind of wondering what's, 
What's the holdup? Going on, yeah, exactly. News is still yeah. flowing. It's just flowing slower. But we always have to remember the other thing. And Yuri and I have both been through this personally. Setting yeah. up a business and launching a business is not just a, hey, I'm launching a business and in three months the product will be 100%.